I'm Amy Rose. And I'm Chris Taggart. And you're watching Mr. Media. Media. Yay! Amy Rose may not be the only country music singer to sing songs about drinking and partying, but she's certainly staking her rising career on them. The first time she was on Mr. Media in 2012, it was to pr promote and sing Party Like a Redneck, also known as Redneck Reunion. In 2015, she was here commanding us all to show up naked and bring beer. This time, our favorite performer in all of North America has a new drinking anthem, Put a Lime in It. It is her fastest rising single to date, and when you hear Sing It Here Live, you'll know why. In fact, she'll be performing two songs today with guitarist Chris Taggart. That's him on the right there. Her left, our right. So stick around for a little lime and one of these days. Oh, and P.S. Uh, Amy promised to sponsor my Canadian citizenship if Donald Trump is elected president of the United States. Uh, I don't think I actually asked her to do that, but she was sweet enough to offer knowing the stakes involved. So, my dear, thank you. With that, Amy Rose, welcome back to Mr. Media. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you, handsome? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Still at it, huh? <laughs> I want to break out in song and start singing, You light up my life. <laughs> okay, you do one more line of that, I'm going to have to pay for it, so don't do that. <laughs> wow. So, uh, everything goes better with alignment the these days, huh? Everything. When all else fails, put a lime in it. That's my new model. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got to ask you, because, you know, in the States, and I should point out you are in Canada, in the States there's an expression, uh, put a sock in it. Is that, does that, you know, is, is that common? Oh, no, place that with a lime. A lime. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, I, I'm <laughs> The thinking, sock is too dirty, hon. We want to replace it with a lime. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, maybe somewhere deep in his catalog, Hank Williams Jr. sang, you know, put a sock in it. But, but is, I'm, you know what? Probably. <laughs> well, I mean, last time we talked about uh, uh, the Red Solo Cup song, right? So. And it became a song, like a huge song. It's a huge hit. Yeah. So, you know, maybe socks are next. Lo socks? So I, I can write a song about dirty socks. <laughs> you know what they do? You know what that actually means? Like if you put a sock on the door. Do you know what that means up here? I, I know what it meant when I was in college. No, what does it mean in Canada? <laughs> oh, it just means, you know, do not enter because they're doing the taxes. Tax tax time. It's tax season. You guys are so calm and sophisticated. I know. It's, it's what the accountants do when they're, you know, when you're doing your taxes. Put the sock on the door so they know not to interrupt. Oh, because when I was in college, it meant somebody was getting laid. I, you know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, naturally. Oh, oh, my gosh. I would have never, ever, ever thought that, ever. Never. So, I got to ask you. You, you know, I, I, I mentioned in the introduction, you've had a lot of luck with songs about partying and drinking. Last time I teased you about what are you going to do when your when your oldest uh, tells you she wants to part start partying or you know you know she wants to party like a redneck and you're like uh oh. <laughs> but I mean, it's been a really good match for you, right? I mean, you found this this, <laughs> this thing that really works for you. Yeah, because you know what the thing is, is I've always been about ballads, you know what I mean? Even in my younger years, mm -hmm. um, it was always about the ballads, right? And I, I I don't know, I love doing the ballads, but these party songs are just really doing the thing. Like, I mean, people just like to relate to beer. Let's face it, everybody likes beer. Everybody likes beer. Yep. Name one person that doesn't like beer. So, you know, these songs are working. I, I, <laughs> well, I'm I like beer. I'm more of a soda guy, but you know, and sangria. But I know I'm like the I'm the only one. Beer, You're beer, 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 one. beer. I, everything's about beer. You go into the supermarket and it's like beer. You can buy beer in a supermarket, not up here, but you can in the states. You can now. What can you buy it up here? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because there we, goes we Amy the right out the door. <laughs> I know. I'm like, geez, I can buy beer in a store. I'm going. You tell me what store. But I mean, when you're down in the States, it is cheaper, it is physically cheaper to buy a can of beer at the store than it is a, a bottle of water. It's true. It's absolutely it's true. It's very true. I was, I was like, wow, like the, if I buy a beer, it's going to save me 50 cents. I'm getting the beer. <laughs> and you know, I've got to tell you, I just had a great idea for your next beer song. Oh, do tell. Make fun of craft beer. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
it's 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 die it's just begging to be made fun of in a country song and you mentioned a lot of brands right and you know you made a million bucks made a million bucks yes <laughs> I, I don't I, I mean is, is craft beer as big in Canada as it is in the states uh, you know what? Um, so craft beer, define craft beer, because we had, for Party Like a Redneck, remember we had Crazy Canuck sponsor us, which is Great Lakes Beer, which is a craft beer. So, or is it a beer ale? It's still craft beer, right? Well, I, I, all I know is down here, there is like a, a there have popped up uh, breweries like on every corner. And they all make their own brand of beer. They all have one beer or three beers or four beers. Oh. And there's there's whole pubs where you go and they have like 40 beers and they're all small little little craft beers and we know, call that bootlegging up here bootlegging. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i keep forgetting who i'm talking to okay all right <laughs> well all right so so i've gotten us off track tell me about how put a lime in it came about uh well um i started working with a producer from nashville Dale Oliver, um, who is known for working with Carrie Underwood on some of her stuff, um, Bucky Comington, um, he's worked with the, the Casting Crowns, um, he's just a really well-known producer, and um, he had given the song to me and asked me to take a listen to it, and you know, I fall in love with the beer songs, right? So uh, it was written by Dale Oliver and another talented songwriter, um, Kaylin Lloyd. Uh, so I loved it. And uh, we went down to Nashville, and we recorded a we recorded it, and it became the next single. Yeah, it's a very cool song. I mean, you've had a really good run with these types of songs. It's uh, it's very cool. I, I should just put out an ad. I'm I'm looking for beer songs. Anybody that's got beer songs, <laughs> send them my way because they're working. <laughs> Why well, change a good thing, right? <laughs> that's what, that's why I suggested the craft beer song. Maybe next time. I'll tell you what. Next time you come down to Nashville, ask somebody to take you around a couple craft beer places. Okay, I'm gonna what, do it. That's what they do because they usually they usually pubs where they have like 40 craft beers and they make their own food, and it's a, it's it's like a religious experience in the states now. <laughs> it's a big thing. I, I imagine <laughs> you, you, or, you know you get get somebody in Nashville to write you a craft beer song. I think uh, that would be. I well, you know what? After we're done, I'm gonna write a craft beer song now. There you go. And I, and I mentioned flavored flavored craft beer because I like the peaches. The Bahama Mamas, the mango, like these these flavored beers are oh. driving me insane. I oh, love them. I can't enough of them. They're they're chocolate, and there's down here there's chocolate, and there's coffee, right. and there's I mean you 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 name a, a flavor, and it's they've made a beer out of it down here. Exactly, and it's driving me like I mean it's like where has it been all my life? It's like literally it's literally replaced my addiction with chips and dip. Oh my goodness! Like and that's huge, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean I think I might. I might have to start attending AA meetings because I love flavored beer and I will scream it from the rooftop. <laughs> and that could be the next song, AA. And because there we go. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be perfect? You'll have like four or five a beer and party songs in a row, and then people will be thinking, "Wow, if there's that much drinking, she's going to crash." And then you come back with an AA song. <laughs> Here, I've just mapped out your whole career. I just want my ten percent. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. All right. So, <laughs> anything else we should know about this song before you uh, before you guys perform it? Um. Oh, yes. Funny story. Okay. So, up in Canada, uh, we say put a lime in it, right? When I was learning the song, I was learning it as put a lime in it because we say a. We do our alphabets up here properly. A, a, right? And you guys do it as a. Ah, put a ah, lime in it, right? So I remember being in the studio with this. And uh, it took me forever to grasp on the concept that they really wanted me to just put a lime in it and not a lime. <laughs> so uh, I was working with Bucky Covington in the studio as well. Um, it was funny because uh, he was standing outside of the glass box, I was in the glass box singing this song, and I kept saying, put a lime in it. And he would say, okay. It's great, great, but I want you to say put a lime in it, right? So he's like, I'm going to point at you. I'm going to point at you when it gets to that part, and I want you to say put a lime in it, right? I close my eyes when I sing, so that's not going to work, dude, right? So uh, <laughs> finally after, like, I literally probably like 50, 60 takes. I'm probably exaggerating, not that many, but a lot of takes. It was a lot of takes. And uh, he comes in, and he, he's so sincere, and he 
he puts his hand on my arm and says, I love what you're doing. It's great. Keep doing what you're doing. But if you say put a lime in it one more time instead of put a lime in it, I'm going to shove my boot right up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where do I want to take this? Like, hmm, I'm not like that. But I was like, oh, wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. That is a great and story. And then, what a lime in it was born. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves for the musical stylings of Amy Rose, accompanied by Chris Taggart. The song, Put a Lime in It. Terrific. Thank you so much. All right, uh, folks, we're going to take a little break here. We'll be right back. Country music fans may get a bad rap that they don't read enough, that they don't know enough about the history of country music. Well, maybe it's a matter of reading. Maybe you'd rather listen. I mean, you listen to music, right? So maybe you'd like to listen to a book about country music, about country music stars. You know, Audible has been a, a sponsor of Mr. Media on and off for most of the 10 years that we've been around. And uh, maybe you'd like to check out an Audible book on tape, right? Listen to it. Don't, don't worry about reading it. But So I went and looked to see what was available. How about Outlaw, Waylon, Willie, Chris, and the Renegades of Nashville? That's by Michael Streisguth. That sounds good. How about The Dow of Willie? 
A Guide to the Happiness in Your Heart by Willie Nelson and Turk Pipkin. How about The Man Called Cash, The Life, Love, and Faith of an American Legend? That's by Steve Turner. And that one's narrated, get this, by Chris Christopherson, himself a legend of country music. Well, you can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial today by signing up at www.audible.com slash try now. All right, one more time, Mr. Media listeners, you can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial today by signing up at www.audible.com slash try now. That's T-R-Y-N-O-W. All right, and we are back. Um, Amy, uh, as a fan of yours on uh, Facebook, as I hope everyone is, and if they're not, they should be, I know that your daughters uh, have been growing like weeds. Uh, uh, what are they up uh, to, and are we any closer to having a uh, rose chorus yet? <laughs> a rose chorus? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be so cool, right? Mama and her three daughters? <laughs> Thanks. You should be, you're the creator. You should totally get some, some profit of some sort if okay. it happens. All right. I'll take that. I'll take some of that. Oh, gosh. They are going like weeds. Um, Dana, uh, my oldest, is going into grade 10. Wow. Yeah. Insane. So um, she's counting down the days until she gets her driver's license because up, there, up here in Canada, we can get it at uh, 16, mm-hmm. right? So G1, G2, and G. Um, so it's like 300 and I think 340 some odd days until she gets her driver's license now. <laughs> <laughs> Every day she lets us know how many days. I'm certain that it probably will be hours and then minutes and then seconds as well. So. <laughs> um, and then Olivia is going into grade three. Um, she's my uh, she's my sport sport girl. I don't know. I like she's really into. Um, Dancing, she loves dancing, so she's going to be starting comp dancing this year. And Dana's also comp dancing as well. And then Ella's, um, Ella's six. She's going into. She just graduated SK, so she's going into grade one. Um, and she's just full of um, attitude. <laughs> really, I can't imagine where she gets that from. Right? Where? I have no idea. No. Idea. Okay, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I <don't> <laughs> Uh, it must be a six-year-old thing. It must, it must be. So, <laughs> must. Yeah, while well, you were uh, uh, singing, uh, put a lime in it. Uh, you know, I don't. I'm surprised I hadn't asked you this before. Uh, you hit those high notes, and you're so into the song. I, I, when you when you perform live, do you ever cover like any Janis Joplin? Have you ever thought about it? If you haven't, I do. You do? I actually we do um, "Piece of My Heart" by Janis Joplin mm. in our live shows, and we do "Me and Bobby McGee." So I yeah, and they go over really well, oh, like yeah. really well. Awesome. So everybody loves Janis Joplin, though, right? Well, but not everybody can sing. I mean, that voice was so big and bombastic. You know, bombastic. bombastic. That's really what I'm going to have to look up in the dictionary. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey. uh, you know, have you ever seen? There's this. There's this old uh, video on YouTube of uh, Janis Joplin and Tom Jones singing together. Get out! Oh yeah, you should no, go look I've that never- up. I, I've I, never seen it. Oh yeah, you got to look it up on YouTube. Do it when we get off the when we get off the interview because uh, that is, as far as I'm concerned, that's like the greatest tape performance I've ever seen of her. Is it, it like a duet? Like they yeah. do a duet? They have a physical duet together? Yeah. Oh, and, and, I'm gonna have to check that out. Okay, so now hmm. I know that you you know you, you you're into Janice. Uh, you you like that? I love. It's pretty amazing. Uh, oh. Now if I remember. I'm sorry. A Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I remember only one line. That's all we can afford. One line. That's it. One line. We can't, we can't be paying out royalties to every singer out there, people. One line is what you get. Yeah, that's 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 all we're allowing here. Um, so uh, the other thing I was, I was thinking is it's been um, four years uh, since you first brightened the show. Uh, uh, Ella was two, I guess. Um, and I'm kind of wondering how uh, – if at all, has your music evolved, um, and what have you learned in four years? Oh, gosh, I've learned a lot in four years. <laughs> some good, some bad. <laughs> um, really, you know, just it's surround yourself. Like I've been saying, you know, all this time, um, I'm pretty knowledgeable when I want to be. Uh, surround yourself with good people, and you're destined for good things. Because, you know, it's it's the great people that help you and believe in you that are standing behind you that you know are the reason why you achieve right without that motivation and that support 
I wouldn't be here, you know, where I am today. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for the fans continuously requesting my songs and, and, you know, the amazing people as yourself promoting them for me, I, again, wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. So, you know, my fate is in your hands. <laughs> so to speak, right? Yes, you, you are the eye of the beholder. <laughs> oh, God. Let's move past that quickly, folks. Um, so you're going to do, you guys are going to do another song for us. Uh, this is uh, one of these days. What can you tell us about this song? So this song um, was actually a Leanne Ryan song. You know, I'm all about doing songs, taking songs, and making them my own, right? This was a song that was put on one of her albums as a filler. I always go for those filler songs that, you know, have never been released. Um, and I, uh, I just met Dale, um, you know, who had produced uh, Put a Lime in It, right? And uh, this is my first song that I end up recording with him. And I had uh, met him and I had, you know, sent him that song. And I said, yo, I really love that song. I said, yo, you know, because that's what we do up here in Canada. Yo, Dale, I really love this song. What do you think of it? And it's funny because he, he knows everybody, right? And he's like, you know, I know that guitar player on that song. And because they talk like that, right? I know that guitar player on that song. And, and he said the guy's name. And, and sure enough, it was. And he's like, yeah, you know, I, that's a really great song to do. And, you know, Leanne and you know, just, you know, talking like he, you know, like he knew. You know, he just knew it was the song for me to do. And, and it ended up being a great song. And, and I still love it. You know, I love her version. And I, I love, you know, what we've done with it. So uh, we we recorded it and we released it and uh, it did it did pretty well. Well, folks, I give you Chris Taggart on guitar and Amy Rose on voice, <laughs> singing one of these days. <laughs> Pretending not to care, not to care, leaves me halfway there.
these days. Oh no, these days. Oh no, these days. These days. I mean, what a magnificent instrument! Uh, and 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 Amy, you sing really well too. <laughs> okay, there it is. Thank Yay, you. <laughs> no, no, I mean, just, that's my tiger. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, that that was just amazing. Uh, those notes, I don't know how you do that. I, you know, I, that's the thing about singing. You know, I'm just always in awe. Of, some people just have that incredible voice, that, that God-given voice, and. Uh, Boy, what you do with it is just amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, it's just really, Thanks. you know, it's really, really cool. All right, so in the in the minute we have left, what's next? Where are we people be able to f- see you in the coming months? Uh, uh, well, mm, so I am in the process of, and I wish I could tell you more. Oh, I... So I'm in the process right now of something huge, something big, um, that puts me back out on the road with a certain um, somebody. I can't tell you who. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to be back out on the road for a bit, and I'm going to be doing some shows, um, as well as we're working on the next single, Shotgun. Um, not about beer, but, I mean, you know, I could bring out my best side, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not drinking at this point. I'm bringing out a gun, and I'm going to be like, yo, Stay back because I can't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Drinking and shooting. Oh, no drinking, just shooting. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of, we got a lot of radio interviews coming up, um, some press stuff. Uh, Chris and I might be going back out on the road again um, to do some radio stuff. Uh, we, we were actually in New York together uh, doing a radio tour for one of these days. Um, too much fun. We had so much fun. Um, Chris laughs like a girl, and he's got really bad jokes. So uh, that kind of made it a bit awkward. But you know, if, if you can get past the whole, he laughs like a girl, and I mean girl, girl, really girl, um, and he's got really bad jokes, then it's fun, all fun. <laughs> so a lot of great stuff coming up. <laughs> all right. And the, and the touring in in Canada and the U.S. A little of both. What are we talking about? Um, a little of both, but uh, mainly the U.S. That is uh, that's our primary market right now is you know things are happening in the US for us and they're doing great so uh, we've got the UK release coming out of put a lime in it so um, you know who knows maybe I might end up out there would <laughs> Australia awesome. would be great I hear it's, it's gorgeous out there and all those buff Australian men walking around with their surfboards I wouldn't object <laughs> that's the way I feel about going back to Rio <laughs> um, not the guys not the guys, no. Let's just be clear. No, no, definitely not, not, the, not the guys. guys. Definitely it's not the, the guys. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, folks, listen. Uh, you can find Amy Rose's latest single, Put a Lime in It, along with her other hits, Party Like a Redneck, also known as Redneck Reunion, and Show Up <laughs> Naked and Bring Beer. I love saying that. At great online music stores everywhere, or you can order it and any of her work uh, right now at a great price at MrMedia.com. If you're watching on the site, MrMedia.com, uh, somewhere under the video, you will see uh, the art for Put a Lime in It, or for uh, Party Like a Redneck, or Shut Up and Bring Beer. Did I say it right? Show Up Naked and Bring Beer. I always forget the naked. Show Up Naked and Bring Beer. Nobody ever says that. I I, 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 I don't know why. Naked. I'm all about the nakedness. The naked, the beer, the party. We're we're getting the picture, I think. Yeah. Um, so, so anywhere under the video, if you're at MrMedia.com, you can click on uh, the the uh, cover, the the, the uh, single, the art, and it'll take you. Uh, you can buy it on uh, iTunes or Amazon or anywhere you usually get music. Um, website is what, Amy? You can catch me at www. That's three W's. Amy Rose Music. Com. 
that, that's where people can find uh, information about uh, tour dates and other oh, things? It's, yeah, anything and everything you want to know about me is there. Um, my foot size, my eye color, my hair, <laughs> anything. Anything you want to know about me is there. Right. And, and we're going to post a picture of her uh, monogrammed uh, towel from the hall bathroom uh, as well. Yes. So oh, my gosh. Be please do. Yeah. Uh, and on, <laughs> on Facebook. Now, Facebook is the real place you want to follow Amy because – uh, she posts the latest stuff that's going on, whether it's about her career, the kids, uh, all that kind of stuff. You can find out what's going on. But also, real, most importantly, when there's, when there's dates, when she's going to be on the radio near you or she's going to be performing near you, you want to follow her on Facebook so you can see it there. And who are you on Facebook, Amy? I am Amy Rose. Okay. That seems simple, right? People can spell that. <laughs> and, uh, Amy Rose. Amy Rose Music, checking Rose Music, yeah. All right. And you're on uh, Twitter as well, right? I am. I am on the Twitter. Um, but it's basically in the Twitter. <laughs> I am so, unless it's Facebook, I am so not media frenzy. <laughs> um, but yes, anything that's posted to my Facebook automatically gets posted to my Twitter. And on Twitter, you're Amy Rose Music? I believe so. Amy Rose Music Official, I think, or Amy underscore Rose underscore Music. That would be me okay. right here. <laughs> Important to know those little details. Um, well, uh, uh, Amy and Chris, uh, great performances. And let's, let's let the Internet in on a secret. We know that there's a little the, – the, it's a little funky on the recording sometimes with this. So, you know, so don't be thinking you're going to bootleg and sell – these renditions just enjoy them for the live performances that they are and know that we all know that they're they're a little imperfect and that's just a, a function of technology trust me it is not this woman's voice and it is not this man's playing it's just the technology uh amy and chris uh great to see you both thank you so much for joining us today on mr media thank you so much for having me you're still you're, you're my favorite you always have been always will be you hold a spot <laughs> in my heart For a studio audience full of Grand Ole Opry fans sipping complimentary Seagram's Escapes Bahama Mamas with a lime in it in the new new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite beer. 